what's happening in genomics and how this revolution is about to change everything we know about the world, life, ourselves, um, and how we, how we think about them. If you saw 2001 A Space Odyssey and you heard the boom, 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 and you saw the monolith, you know, that was Arthur C. Clarke's uh, representation that we were at a seminal moment in the evolution of our species. In this case, it was picking up bones and creating a tool, using it as a tool, which meant that apes just sort of running around and eating and doing each other figured out they can make things um, uh, if they used a tool. Um, and that moved us to a next level. And, you know, we in the last uh, 30 years in particular have seen this acceleration in knowledge and technology, and technology has bred more knowledge and given us tools. And we've seen many seminal moments. We've seen the creation of small computers in the 70s and early 80s. And who would have thought back then that every single person would not just have one computer, but probably 20 in your home, in your, and in not just your PC, but in every one, every device in your washing machine, um, your cell phone, your wallet walking around, um, your car has 12 microprocessors. Then we go along and create the internet and connect the world together. We flatten the world. We've seen so much change, and we've given ourselves these tools now, these high-power tools that are allowing us to turn the lens inward into something that is common to all of us, and that is a genome. How's your genome today? <laughs> Have you thought about it lately? heard about it at least, um, probably hear about genomes these days. Um, I thought I'd take a moment to tell you what a genome is. It's sort of like if you ask people, well, what is a megabyte or megabit? And what is broadband? People never want to say, I really don't understand. So I will tell you right off of the bat, you've heard of DNA. You probably studied a little bit in um, biology. A genome is really a description for all of the DNA that is in a living organism. And one thing that is common to all of life is DNA. Doesn't matter whether you're yeast, doesn't matter whether you're a mouse, doesn't matter whether you're a fly. Um, we all have DNA. The DNA is organized in words, call them, uh, genes and chromosomes. And when Watson and Crick in the 50s first decoded this beautiful double helix that we know as the, the um, DNA molecule, very long, complicated molecule. We then started on this journey to understand that inside of that DNA is a language that determines the characteristics, our traits, what we inherit, what diseases we may get. We've also along the way um, discovered that this is a very old molecule, that all of the DNA in your body has been around forever, since the beginning of us, of us as creatures. There is a historical archive. Living in your genome is the history of our species, and you, as an individual human being, where you're, where you're from, um, going back thousands and thousands and thousands of years, and that's now starting to be understood. But also the genome is really the instruction manual. It is the program. It is the code of life. It is what makes you function. It is what makes every organism function. DNA is a very elegant molecule. It's long and it's complicated. Really all you have to know about it is that there's four letters, A, T, C, G, they represent the name of a chemical. And with these four letters, you can create a language, a language that can describe anything and very complicated things. You know, they are generally put together in pairs, um, creating a word or what we call base pairs. And you would, you, you know, when you think about it, four letters or the representation of four things makes us work. And that may not sound very intuitive, but let me flip over to something else you know about, and that's computers. Look at this screen here, and, you know, you see pictures and you see words, but really all there are is are ones and zeros. Um, the language of technology is binary. You've probably heard that at some point in time. Everything that happens in digital is 
converted or a representation of a one and a zero. So when you're listening to iTunes and your favorite music, that's really just a bunch of ones and zeros playing very quickly. When you're seeing these pictures, it's all ones and zeros. When you're talking on your telephone, your cell phone, and it's going over the network, your voice is all being turned into ones and zeros and magically whizzed around. And look at all the complex things and wonderful things we've been able to create with just a one and a zero. Well, now you ramp that up to four and you have a lot of complexity, um, a lot of ways to describe uh, mechanisms. So let's talk about what that means. So if you look at a human genome, um, they consist of 3.2 billion of these base pairs. That's a lot. And they mix up in all different fashions and that makes you a human being. Um, if you convert that to binary, just to give you a little bit of sizing, um, we're actually smaller than the program Microsoft Office. Um, uh, it's not really all that much data. I will also tell you we're at least as buggy. Um, uh, <clears throat> this here is a bug in my genome <clears throat> that I have struggled with for a long, long time. Um, uh, when you get sick, uh, it is a bug in your genome. In fact, many, many diseases we have struggled with for, for a long time, like cancer, we haven't been able to cure because we just don't understand how it works at the genomic level. We are starting to understand that. So up to this point, we try to fix it by using what I call shit-against-the-wall pharmacology, which means, <laughs> well, let's just throw chemicals at it and maybe it's going to make it work. But if you really understand why does a cell go from normal cell to cancer, what is the code? What are the exact instructions that are making it do that? Then you can go about the process of trying to fix it and figure it out. So for your next dinner over a great bottle of wine, here's a few factoids for you. We actually have about 24,000 genes that do things. We have about 100, 120,000 others that don't appear to function every day but represent this archival history of how we used to work as a species going back tens of thousands of years. You might also be interested in knowing that a mouse has about the same amount of genes. They recently sequenced Pinot Noir, and it also has about 30,000 genes. Um, so the number of genes you have may not necessarily represent the complexity or the evolutionary order um, of, of any particular species. Now look around. Just look next to your neighbor, look forward, look backward. We all look pretty different. A lot of very handsome, pretty people here, skinny, chubby, different races, cultures. We are all 99.9% percent genetically equal. It is one one hundredth of one percent of genetic material that makes the difference between any one of us. Um, that's a tiny amount of material, but the way that ultimately expresses itself is what makes changes in humans and in all species. So we are now able to read genomes. The first human genome took 10 years, $3 billion, it was done by um, Dr. Craig Venter. And then James Watson, one of the co-founders of DNA, His genome was done for $2 million and in just two months. And if you think about the computer industry and how we've gone from big computers to little ones and how they get more powerful and faster um, all the time, the same thing is happening with gene sequencing now. We are on the cusp of being able to sequence human genomes for about $5,000 in about an hour or a half hour. You will see that happen in the next five years. And what that means is you are going to walk around with your own personal genome on a smart card. It will be here. And when you buy medicine, you won't be buying a drug that's used for everybody. You will give your genome to the pharmacist and your drug will be made for you and it will work much better than the ones that work. You won't have side effects. All those side effects, you know, oily uh, residue and you know, whatever they say in those commercials, forget about that. They're going to make all that stuff go away. What does a genome look like? Well, there it is. It is a long, long series of these uh, base pairs. If you saw the genome for a mouse or for a human, it would look no different than this. But what scientists are doing now is they're understanding 
what these do and what they mean. Because what nature is doing is double-clicking all the time. In other words, the first couple of sentences here, assuming this is a grape plant, make a root, make a branch, create a blossom. In a human being down in here, it could be make blood cells, um, start cancer. Um, uh, For me, it may be uh, every calorie you consume, you conserve because I come from a very cold climate. For my wife, eat three times as much and you never put on any weight. It's all hidden in this code and it's starting to be understood at breakneck pace. 